Hello, my name is Rafael Henriques, and I'm currently doing a postdoc at the Champalimont Center for the Unknown at the Shemesh Lab. I have been an active DiPi contributor since 2015, basically the time that I was doing my PhD at the University of Cambridge. Today, I will be talking about diffusional kurtosis imaging. This talk will be basically improved version of the talk that I gave for the virtual DiPi meeting in 2021. I hope you enjoy. So what is diffusional kurtosis imaging? Diffusional kurtosis imaging, or DKI for short, was a diffusion MRI technique first proposed by Yen Jensen in 2005. This technique is basically a phonological model because it quantifies signal properties without imposing specific microstructural models or tissue assumptions. So what DKI quantifies? It quantifies the degree of non-Gaussian diffusion by measuring the diffusional excess kurtosis. So what is diffusional kurtosis? In free water, as for example, in a glass of water, we expect that the displacement of diffusion molecules exhibit a Gaussian distribution. If we plot the displacement of the position of water molecules at a given time and direction, we will see that the displacements will follow a Gaussian distribution. However, water inside TC compartments are confined. If we look to the displacement probability function for confined compartments, we see that this deviates from Gaussian distribution. In statistics, deviation from the Gaussian distribution can be quantified by the excess kurtosis. And this quantity will be different than zero for non-Gaussian uh, distributions. For example, in the case of confined diffusion, the displacement distribution functions show sharper tails than the Gaussian distribution. And this is quantified by a negative excess kurtosis. In biological uh, tissues, we, however, typically observe positive kurtosis. The reason is that since we have a large number of compartments with different diffusivities, the displacement probability distribution will have higher probabilities in the tails than the Gaussian uh, distribution. And this reflects the higher displacements of water in compartments with higher diffusivities, such for the case of the extracellular space. The larger the variance of diffusivities across compartments, the higher is kurtosis. And that is the reason why kurtosis is sometimes assumed to, to be an index of tissue diffusion heterogeneity. So why measuring kurtosis can be important? Several studies have shown that kurtosis can provide important additional information to the diffusion test. Just to give you an idea of the additional information that kurtosis can give you, let's consider the following tissue voxel scenarios. First, one voxel containing dense, well-aligned fibers, another containing less dense fibers, and a, another containing dense but crossing fibers. If we look to the different diffusion tensors, we can note that higher anisotropies are present for the dense, well-aligned fibers, while lower anisotropies are present for the other scenarios. If we only look to the information provided by the diffusion tensors, you can see that it's hard to distinguish if the lower anisotropies are due to the a decrease of the density of fibers or the presence of crossing fibers. However, now let's look to the kurtosis tensors of the, the, the two first scenarios. We now see that we have higher values uh, perpendicular to the main direction of the fibers. And we see that the magnitude of these directions um, correlates with the density of the, the fibers. And now let's look to the crossing uh, scenario. We will see that the magnitude of the kurtosis tensor doesn't decrease on the scenario. And also it provides uh, the information of the crossing uh, fibers. So kurtosis tensors can be used to better distinguish these different uh, scenarios. In practice, the unique information provided by kurtosis can be useful for example, to improve tractography algorithms, in particular to resolve crossing fiber regions. Also, DKI can provide better parametric maps than the diffusion tensor. For example, you can note that the magnitude of the kurtosis tensor maintained high on crossing areas. So quantities has the mean kurtosis can uh, provide a better characterization of the tissue condition independently of tissue crossing effects. 
For example, in, in contrast of the F FA maps, the mean kurtosis maps show uh, values that doesn't decrease on regions that contain crossing areas as the regions that I'm pointing here. Now, I will show you some concrete examples on how DTI can provide better characterizations than DTI based on previous studies. So, for example, in aging, it was shown that while FI shows negative age correlations with subject age, uh, which didn't match with uh, behavioral uh, changes, the mean kurtosis values across age shows that the early FA declines are not related to declines on tissue non-Gaussian properties. In opposite, the mean kurtosis seems to be sensitive to late maturation processes. This also indicates that the FA early de decreases can just be affected by confounding factors of changes on the white matter orientation complexity. In tumors, mean kurtosis values are also seem to better correlate with tumor grade, where more aggressive tumors are associated with higher mean kurtosis values than less aggressive tumors. In stroke, kurtosis is more sensitive to the extent of ischemic stroke lesions than previous mean diffusivities quantities. So now that I showed the potential of DKI, the question is how to measure it in practice. As explained in previous uh, talks, more conventional techniques, such as standard DTI, quantifies the anisotropy of diffusion using different directions but with the constant B value. DTI, however, assumes that at each direction, uh, diffusion is Gaussian. And therefore, it expects that the signal decays with the B, uh, B value in the linear fashion. However, if we measure this in practice on biological tissues, we observe that there's a deviation from this linear uh, decays. And this is because of the non-Gaussian uh, uh, properties not assumed by this, this, this models. So the uh, DTI, what basically does is use this non-linear non decay behavior to measure kurtosis using this expression. And for this, it re requires acquisition for multiple B values, or also known as multi shell acquisitions. In this slide, I'm showing how we can fit DKI at multiple directions simultaneously. This can be done by simply inserting the diffusion and kurtosis tensor equations to the 1D DKI expression. To note that since the kurtosis tensor captures higher uh, uh, order angular information, it is a higher order tensor than the diffusion uh, tensor. So while the diffusion tensor has six unique elements, the kurtosis tensor has 15 elements. So in DKI, we estimate in total 21 uh, par parameters. And this is the reason why our acquisitions need to be performed across 21 directions that can be distributed across different uh, non-zero B values in addition to our B not acquisitions. After having fitted the diffusion and kurtosis tensors on all data voxels, DKI can be used to extract all metrics from both diffusion and kurtosis tensor. This includes all the DTI measurements such as the mean diffusivity, axial diffusivity, radial diffusivity, and fractional anisotropy. DKI can also provide the novel measurements from the kurtosis tensor, such as the mean kurtosis being the average of all kurtosis across all the directions, the axial kurtosis being the kurtosis value along the uh, principal main direction of the diffusion tensor, the radial kurtosis has been the average of the perpendicular directions to this main axis, and also we can quantify the anisotropy of the kurtosis uh, uh, tensor. And you can also appreciate that the information of the anisotropy of the kurtosis uh, tensor is different from the diffusion tensor. Now, just to mention that there can be some adaptions of the DKI model. For example, this is the case of the mean signal DKI model. In this DKI adaption, 
We don't try to measure the full diffusion tensor or kurtosis tensor from data of individual directions, but instead we first average the data for all the directions for given p values, and then we try to extract scalar uh, kurtosis and diffusion uh, parameters from this average data. The advantage of this adaptation is that the kurtosis quantities obtained will be completely independent to the information of crossing fibers. So basically, if we have voxels with the same microstructural properties, so for example, compartments with the same diffusivities and bloom uh, fractions, it will always give the same uh, quantities independently on the complexity of crossing the green. Uh, to note that this approach cannot be uh, done on the DTI because the DTI really requires the information of different directions to estimate its anisotropies. So the mean signal BKI was the technique that, for example, I applied on my PhD to remove the confounding effects of crossing fibers on the uh, kurtosis age uh, uh, profiles. And another advantage of the mean signal kurtosis index is that it is more robust to noise uh, artifacts. So for example, it's, it's typically to observe uh, implausible negative values on regions of the corpus uh, callosum that, so basically this uh, black voxels here and there, and which basically reflects the effects of noise. While if you use this mean signal uh, kurtosis, since it uh, involves the uh, estimate of a less number of parameters, it produces maps that are more, much more clean to this type of artifacts. So in this slide, I'm showing how you can fit BKI using DiPy using uh, the uh, uh, command uh, lines. So this is identical to what was presented for the D DTI model in the last uh, uh, talk. So uh, first thing that you have to, to give is the information of your data that has to have multiple b-value uh, acquisitions. So here I'm just downloading some data that uh, DiPy can uh, provide. Uh, you can also perform pre-processing uh, steps before the, the fit. So here I'm just using the medium uh, Watson to calculate a brain mask. And then finally, when you have when you know the directories of your, your data, so in this case I'm using the data that, that, is, that I just downloaded, but you can't use the directories of your own uh, data. So basically the command that you need to, to, to write is dipy fit dki, following by the, the directory where you have your, the data saved on, on, on nifty format. Uh, the, the second uh, input parameter is a, a directory that contains the information of your b-values, and the third argument is the information of your the, um, gradient directions. Uh, I'm also inputting here the brain max that was computed on this la last step, just to avoid uh, calculations on the ba background. The, all the statistics or the standard DKI statistics will be saved on the directory that you will give on this, this uh, variable. So in this case, I'm I'm saving on, on this folder here. Just to indicate some limitations of DKI, as it is a phenological model, it does not reveal direct biological properties, so it has limited specificity. For example, in studies looking to generative process, kurtosis changes cannot be directly linked to specific effects, so for example, has this distinguished loss on, of, from myelin or from loss of axonal uh, density. Another limitation is that as the standard diffusion tensor metrics, kurtosis tensor metrics, or some of them, uh, can be biased by confounding crossing effects. Uh, this, however, is not um, uh, applicable to the mean signal kurtosis uh, technique, as I explained it during this talk. Another limitation that is super important to mention is that kurtosis is only uh, adequate to uh, represent the, the signals up to a certain uh, B value. So since DKI uh, assumes that there's only a second order deviation of the log signal uh, decays, it cannot represent well the, the non-linear, the non-Gaussian uh, decays on real uh, tissue. So in fact, if uh, you look to the predicted signal decays 
from the Ki and go to the high B values, you will see that the predictions of this model uh, will predict an increase uh, on the signal. While this is not observed on the on real uh, high B value acquisitions of of TC. However, therefore, it's very important to adjust your B values. Uh, for this technique, so you can basically use this this expression uh, where you can uh, fine tune your B value according to the expected values that you observe of diffusion and kurtosis. For example, if you assume the typical in vivo uh, diffusivities and kurtosis uh, values uh, of uh, tissues, so one micro squares uh, milliseconds in kurtosis of one, you should not be using B values much higher than 3000. For more information on DKI, you can give a look to the following paper, which reports the DKI implementations on, on, on DIPI in larger detail. There you can find extensive review of different kurtosis quantities, even uh, quantities that I didn't have the time to present uh, here. And also, it has extensive uh, literature uh, review of DKI uh, applications, and it also discuss uh, in greater detail the potentials of this technique, and also some limitations that we have to be careful when using this technique. If you're also interested in knowing how to fit DKI using uh, DIPI Python code, I also recommend you to give a look to the uh, DKI tutorial that I gave in 2021 annual DKI workshop. This tutorial is also posted in this workshop after this video. If you have any questions on this tutorial, please uh, find me during this workshop and I will be happy to answer all uh, your questions. Finally, I want to thank you all for your attention and please enjoy the rest of the workshop. Thank you.